arriving at Bonamanzi. We're arriving at Bonamanzi now, just pulling in, just come through the gate and it looks like they have had seriously a lot of rain. So I think we're going to know all about it but hopefully the forecast says the next couple of days should be dry maybe with a little bit of rain. Um, hopefully our campsite is not a mud site but we'll see when we get there. Hi everybody, we are camping at Bonamanzi campsite number 22. Um, we don't know the area so we didn't ask for a specific campsite. But this is basically where we are at the moment. Um, the vehicle is not here, my wife has gone for a massage. Yes, they do offer massages, they've got a spa here as well. Um, if you have a look around you'll see there are two sites on one stand. Um, effectively 21 and 22 which are separated by an ablution block um, each site has their own private toilet and shower and you share a kitchen um, this specific site is quite small if you compare some of the other ones that we've seen as we've walked through the sites and had a general look um, so this site here you're pretty much on top of each other but the other ones are quite big i'll take a walk i don't think there's anybody behind us yet i'll take a walk and have a look over there um excuse all the washing and stuff that's out we normally do our reviews on the day that we arrive um we didn't do it yesterday um due to time constraints and last night we had the mother of all storms which basically flooded out our tent um, our back awning collapsed on the trailer and that caused water to actually go into the tent itself where our bags were so all our clothes got soaked I suppose that's the joys of camping isn't it let me take you and show you what the ablution looks like um, we had to string a makeshift washing line here in the meantime so these are our ablutions um, so you've got quite a nice toilet shower water pressure is good and there are there's a geezer that both share, so that's pretty good. We had to put up a makeshift curtain here because, as you can see, they haven't thought this through, so we basically stuck a towel on the window. So, yeah, that wasn't thought through at all. Um, in terms of cell reception here, there is virtually zero. Um, if you walk around, you might get something. Um, the sites themselves are interlinked by little pathways. Uh, so, if you look behind our site here, there is a pathway that leads through to the next campsite. So if you are camping with friends and you have them at different sites, you are able to do so. I'm taking a walk through the passageway and here as you can see site 23 um, and 24 is on the other side of the ablutions. And as you can see, it's like multiple times the size um, of where we are. Um, has a lot more privacy in terms of where you can park your caravan and your tent or so um, so yeah um, we didn't know the area and also we booked late so we didn't really have a choice of what we wanted um, we obviously do know it now so we will be back obviously um, and we'll select different sites at this time of the year being um, between Christmas and New Year it is quite full here um, they told us it's all booked up today is Friday so these people are probably still coming Okay, so in terms of the sites, this is the forest campsite, so obviously we're deeper into the bush, I don't know what the others look like, we've been unable to go onto them. Each site here has electricity, um, which is obviously affected by load shedding, but we're not load shedding at the moment. Um, there is water for cooking and showering and the toilet. Um, as I told me, it is potable if you want to, but it is not palatable, it's very, very salty, um, so invariably people don't use the water for for drinking it's not recommended for drinking anyway um yeah so that's basically our setup and our site currently um, we've put up full awnings 
for this camp um, simply because of the weather. Um, normally we wouldn't do that um, if we were camping for a short period, but we'll be up for three days. In terms of the area itself, the roads, the, the, the road network here is huge and you are able to go and do your own self drives. Um, currently we've had a lot, a hell of a lot of rain here um, over the last week, so they have closed a lot of the roads in the reserve, so you can't drive them. Um, they say you can't even do so at your own risk because the area has got cotton soil. Um, cotton soil, for those of you who don't know, is basically like black toffee, um, which is on the road. And once you get into it, I don't care what size vehicle or what type of vehicle you've got, there is no chance of you getting out. It literally sticks to your tires and your tire just gets bigger and bigger until it just jams underneath the vehicle. Um, so the recovery vehicles don't even do it. They do offer a recovery service here for a thousand rand per recovery. So if you do have your own 4x4 and want to go out onto some of the routes here, um, you can do so, but obviously you do so at your own risk. Right now they've got to the point where they've actually closed the routes completely, so we can't drive in the reserve other than on the normal main roads that are available within um, the reserve linking the sites to each other. Um, inside the reserve here, it's a big four reserve, which means they've got everything except lion. Um, they've got elephant, we're just driving in and out, we've passed um, some Inyala, some Kudu. Um, we haven't seen the elephant, apparently we missed it just as we came in yesterday. Um, there's rhino here as well and buffalo. So you walk, but you can walk at your own risk. There are walking trails which you can do yourself as well. Um, yeah, it's quite nice here, very quiet, very secluded. Um, deep into the into the forest, um, like I said, no cell reception at all at at this specific campsite. I don't know if the others get it. If you walk around, sometimes you'll get a little bit of cell reception. But yeah, other than that, quite a nice campsite. Um, we're enjoying it here, and we'll chat again soon. Okay, so this is the hide, or the one of the two hides. As you can see, it's like seriously falling apart. Hasn't been cleaned in here forever. Bench is broken. Roof is collapsing. Um, yeah, not a pleasant place to come and sit. You don't even know if there's going to be any snakes. Um, it overlooks a dam. Um, you obviously don't even know if there's going to be any snakes in here and stuff like that. Um, floor looks a bit dodgy. Yeah, I'll walk out and uh, you can see what it looks like on the outside. Bear in mind that this is a big four reserve, so you have elephant here, rhino, and stuff like that. Um, and it doesn't offer much, if any, protection against anything. It's not even a door on here, so you don't know if any animals have actually even gone on the inside. Um, yeah, so that's hide number one. Um, hide number two is another 400 meters that way. I definitely ain't walking that far. The hide itself is a walk from the parking of about 350 meters, so yeah. As you can see, there's been a lot of rain here in Shishlui. And last night we had a massive downpour. And the roads are wet. Everything in our campsite is wet. And hopefully, even though there's clouds in the sky, there's no of chance of rain they say but you can never believe the weather forecast well considering we have all our washing hanging outside from our bags that got soaked last night. yeah our bags got soaked absolutely well my bag didn't but chance did but yeah as you can see it's very very muddy and wet out here morning so it's our our last full day here we pack up tomorrow and we're hoping that the the roads are dry enough to do some of the soft drive routes and we think we're on the on the on the rhino route um unfortunately it's not well signposted so we don't know but i mean this certainly looks like rhino habitat the only problem is here there's black cotton soil and with all the rain you've got to be careful um to avoid that because it just sticks like glue to your tires so i mean we're busy driving now it's a bit overcast although today was supposed to be 35 or not 35 I, I talk nonsense about 30 degrees um, ooh look at that look at that are we gonna try yeah no range okay 
uh, and good to know that it's a, a thousand rand recovery free um, to get out of here if you to come help you to get stuck so let's just hope we don't get stuck but you handled that pretty good mm-hmm I ain't paying the thousand rand no sign of rhinos yet and we're not even sure we're on the right track but it, is, it does look very pretty out there pretty and wet we were hoping it would have dried up not having rain the last two days but it still looks mighty wet to me so this route we're on is apparently not a 4x4 route only the elephant one is a 4x4 what Chad said this one I mean the amount of times we've had to go into low four um, you definitely wouldn't want to come this route which is a rhino route with nothing less than a 4x4 and there we've actually come across buffalo and more mud, and more mud. but let me let me get the buffalo first let's just zoom in So we got to a point as far as we could go and then didn't see another road. So we still don't know whether we're actually on the rhino route. Um, but look at this poor car. Let's see how she's looking. Not too bad. We found what seems to be a better road. I mean, we got as far as the buffalo and couldn't go any further. Um, I wouldn't know which way to go. But now this seems a lot more doable than the last road we were on. So. But still no signpost. No yeah, unfortunately no signpost whatsoever. So you actually don't know which road you're going on, if it's uh, if you're allowed to go on that road or not, because it, it's quite difficult to follow the map. Anyway, so we're hoping we're on the right road now. It certainly looks a lot more drivable than the last one we were on. Um, let's see if we get anywhere. Yes, this road, although I st I'm still not convinced it's the right road or otherwise the, the map is not to scale. But He okay. has a good example. He has a crossroad, but we have no cooking clue what it is. Yeah, no, we don't. But here's some zebra up ahead. Can't try and see it. There we go. Some zebra up ahead. But it's definitely a lot more drivable, this road. But like I said, we still don't know if we're on the right road. Here we go. Quite a nice game drive. Some more zebra. Oh, the chat says some more mud up ahead. Oh, let me close my window. I think we're heading into the fever tree forest. See, there's all these roads, but we don't know where they go. There's a sign on my head. Oh, is there? Well, let's see what the sign says. Office. Oh, office to the right. Okay, then we keep going. Straight. Straight, yeah. We're on the right road then, I think. I think, I don't know. Yeah, let's just keep going straight. Oh, we've got a bit of a roadblock here. <laughs> right now we're doing a Nyala loop. I'm hoping that we're still on the right track morning we what was supposed to be an hour's game drive ended up being two because I think we got horribly lost well not I think I know we did
here we are traveling another road that we don't know we just found another track that's pretty much all it is one thing I can say is you should really have a GPS um, that tracks your route that you are traveling so you can find your way out I mean we are very fortunate that we've got the GPS otherwise earlier you know on our earlier drive we would never have made our way back to the campsite it's not recommended that you do this without a GPS because there are so many side roads and bar roads and tracks and little loops that it is so easy to get lost I mean right now we don't know whether we're heading north east south or west you know unless I look at the GPS we're just following a track and enjoying the bush enjoying the last day of 2023 I mean, who knows we might be driving into 2024 Turn left onto the alley. Not left, right. <laughs> the GPS doesn't know where it's going. At the end of the street, turn left. Turn left onto unpaved gravel. Oh. <laughs> and that is the end of our stay at Bonamanzi.